Are you looking for the source code of advanced and challenging coding tutorials? Join my Patreon page and unlock access to source codes for complex projects and coding tutorials. It is a great way to support the channel and level up your coding skills. Head over to my Patreon page and start exploring some source codes of complex projects today. Link is in description. What's up guys, it's Coding with Arsentic and today I will show you how to make a dictionary app using HTML, CSS and JavaScript and by using REST API. Let's get started! In order to create a dictionary app, all you need to do is to have two files, index.html and style.css. And inside of that index.html file, all you need to do is to add a script tag to write some JavaScript code. Let's get started! Let's add a div with a class name of container, and inside of that container, let's add an h1 with a text dictionary. Then we will add a form with an id and class name of search box. And then we will add an input and a button. Inside of that button, we will add the SVG element of a search icon. And then we will add an error text. Then we will add the word details. Inside of word details, we will add the word info. Inside of that, a word name. Then we will add an h2 with a word name and a p element. Inside of that p element, we will add two span elements with a word type and the phonetic. Then we will add a button. Inside of that button, we will add an SVG element of the sound icon. And this button actually plays the sound. Then we will add the definition text, an example element, a synonym element and antonym element. Here is what the structure will look like without the CSS. Let's add the CSS. Inside the body, let's give a display flex, move everything to center, give a man height of 100vh, a background color and a padding. I use the background color with UI gradients. By clicking on show all gradients, choose your preferred background color, for example blue raspberry, clicking on get CSS and clicking on click to copy. Let's add a container padding, background color, border radius, box shadow and a width. Let's style the form by adding a display flex, moving everything to center, giving a width, flex, wrap and gap. And let's add the style of input and button. On both of them, we will add flex grow 1, flex string 0, padding 0 0.5 em, font size 16 pixels and transition. Then let's add an input style and a button style. Here is what the search box will look like. Okay, now let's add a word info class, display flex, justify content space between a line item center and a margin. Let's give an h2 element of font size 32 pixels and a font weight 500 and a p, a color, which is a gray. Let's style the block code element, adding a border left, padding left and margin top. And on h3 element, let's give a font weight to 500 an h1 of margin bottom 10 pixels. Let's hide the word details and on active class we will show them. Let's add the error text and that's it. Here is what the user interface of that app will look like. Let's write some JavaScript. Let's link the search box by using document get element by id. And now let's link search input, word text, type text, phonetic text sound button, definition text, example element, synonyms element, antonyms element, and now let's add an audio, which is a new audio, and this creates an HTML audio element. Or you can do that by using audio source and ID of audio element. You can use either const audio new audio or const audio equals document dot 
get element by id audio lm. But now I'm using this. Let's link the world details element at an error text. Now let's create an asynchronous function called get word details and we will use the word as a parameter and inside of that we will fetch from the API. The API I'm using is free dictionary API where you can get the word details from an API. For example, if I try to write subscribe here, it returns the word details such as word, phonetics and meanings. After that, we will return the fetch data as a JSON data and then we will create a constant called word data which is equal to the first element of the data array. And let's create a phonetics constant which is a word data phonetics or an empty array. And then let's create a variable called phonetic text and a phonetic audio which both of them has an empty string. We will look through phonetics array and check if phonetic.text exists and phonetic text has not set. If yes, then set the phonetic text to a phonetic text. You, we will do the same on the phonetic audio. And finally, let's check if phonetic text and phonetic audio exist then stop the loop. And then we will get the meaning from the first element of word data dot meanings. As you can see, meanings is an array. If I type hello here, it has multiple meanings, such as noun, verb, or interjection. And then we will return an object. Inside of that object, we will include a word, which is a word to lowercase, phonetic, which is an object that includes text and audio, a speech part, a definition, synonyms, antonyms, and example. On submitting the search box element, we will prevent the form to actually submitting it and check if search input value is none, for example, an empty string. Then, we will set the error text to please enter a word. Otherwise, we will set the error text to none, we will hide the word details element, and we will use the try catch block. Inside of a try block, let's get the word details from a function get word details and we will pass a search input dot value as a parameter. Then we will set the word text, a type text, phonetic text, phonetic audio, a definition text, example text, synonyms text, antonyms text. And we will set the example element display and check if word details example is empty, then none, otherwise block. Let's set the synonyms elements display to check if word data synonyms is empty, then we will set to none, otherwise block. And we will do the same on antonyms element. And we will reactivate the word details element. On the catch block, we will just set the error text to word not found. Let's give them in action. If I type hello here, it works. If I type subscribe, it works. And if I type angry, for example, it works. But if I click on the sound, it doesn't work. Let's add it. On clicking on a sound button, we will call the function. And inside of that function, we will play the sound. Okay, let's try it. If I click on here, Hello. It actually plays the sound. Or let's type subscribe for example. Subscribe. It actually works. If I type something like this, it returns please enter a word. If I type a word that doesn't exist in the dictionary, it says word not found. Move error text dot text content inside of a try. If I type a word which doesn't exist on the dictionary API, it returns word not found. Here is the complete product. Hello.
happy. By making this project, you will improve how to use a REST API in JavaScript and you will boost your JavaScript portfolio. Angry. If I type here and search it, it returns the word details such as the word name, word type, the phonetic, the meaning, and an example. And also it can play a sound. Subscribe. That is it guys. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like, share this video and comment, and don't forget to join my Patreon page. Have a nice day.